Hi everyone. If no one realizes, this is Tom. He's oh, Joe. <laughs> you look different. Amazing. Yeah, you look different. Amazing French now. Huh? So many croissants. bread and baguettes. So many croissants. Yeah. You're, you're French. My head's just like. What are you doing with that jumper, mate? It's the wrong colour. You're oh. fucking sacked. You haven't even got fucking. You stole mine. Listen, you stole my jumper. It's not about your missus. <laughs> <laughs> got the same colour trainers, I know. Yeah. Oh. We, we, we have to change it up. Yeah. I thought that's their fork. Should have to wear a different a outfit. Bit, yeah. and I thought. <laughs> No, stay on brand, right? Stay on brand. <laughs> <laughs> um, how the hell are we anyway, Tom? How was uh, Paris? It was good. It, it was good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. These people are alright. <laughs> Why are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> the, odd, the odd incident. It, nothing, it's nothing. Like, anyone? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, you're all right. That means it was fucking it, hell. I know I no. got a really bad vibe then, mate. I was really intrigued. The food was alright, to be fair. The people are okay. Rude. Odd one or two. Just say how it is, yeah, mate. Yeah, one or two. No, but, but other than, yeah, it rained. Well, that's standard. Yeah, it, it was like being on, in England. Basically. Yeah, walking yeah. up the Eiffel Tower with, with weird food. What was food. the What was the best bit of food you had? Just baguettes, I think. Baguettes. I don't really like French food. I'm not a f- massive fan Genes- of like baguettes. Is Genesis or French? Yeah. No, Genesis. Yeah, Thierry. Yeah, Thierry. Yeah, yeah. Practice Thierry. I'm going to clear. Do you not? What, do you not smash a load of pastry in that? Yeah. Look at you. He's definitely cake. dieting. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you not smash this? I am honestly, thinking. We had the ones with chocolate inside. <laughs> you must have fair. had them, bro. We was walking on the first day. It was throwing it down. She was right through. I was like, right, we're just going here. And we walked in, and it was like, it was like the food hall at Selfridges. Yeah, but yeah. But like on another level. Yeah. And definitely. it was like just chocolate stalls, everything. They had croissants. Honestly, they were about this big. I'm Bigger than you. If it, <laughs> yeah. If it's on camera. It's about this big, and I was like, nuts. And then they just had like all the cakes and everything and we ended up buying like four of each and we just and sat there off. checking with the cold yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smashes like you though didn't it then pastries oh. and that I was knackered we had a nap after yeah. standard, standard, standard like proper nap what did we do Dino's and then the Arnold's right, yeah, you did the yeah, Arnold's yeah. didn't you yeah. Yeah. Dino's was sick too. yeah Dino's was sick yeah. Dino's was such a good gym like old school as fuck got a YouTube video coming out with that session so that's good oh, yeah should um, be soon Arnold's was a different vibe for us wasn't it like so if it's the first year you, me Mark as well, I've not been going to, to be on a stand. So then we've obviously thought, let's go and just view it from a different perspective. Like we'd done 10, 15 years ago yeah, and yeah. like see if you can and get that buzz for it. But it wasn't, the wasn't, same, wasn't was there, it? was it? It's not the same. I think the, cr- the craziest thing that I've taken from that expo is looking at Sam Sulek, right? From one year ago was absolutely nobody. Yeah, yeah. And he was the today. biggest fucking name like the queue was huge. Yeah. Out, yeah. The the queues was hours long, B- yeah. bigger than Dorian's, bigger than Ronnie's, bigger than any frightening, any it? like top level. As as much of as much as like obviously the guy's an animal and he's posted every single day, it's still an anomaly. Do you know what I mean? There's still just something that's clicked and resonated with people with that person. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think his branding, he's just like he's just been himself, authentically yeah. himself. Yeah. But like I sent you a video the other day from was it um, well, be careful about what videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you pay extra for them videos. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I sent you a video from Muscle. Was it Muscle Works? Yeah, the, and the Orpington one. Yeah, yeah, and the queue. I've never seen a queue like. Well, put it this way: Strength Asylum had Ronnie Coleman there. Yeah. There was no queue, and right. then Sam Sulek went, and there was like a fucking hour long, two hour long queue. Not Do you sure. know what though? The, the there was one part that I thought, oh, this just doesn't sit right. I mean, Phil Heath had a bit going on for him, but like. Panata was making a big deal of him, so and they put him on on a pedestal, like legitimately on a pedestal. Mm. So, so that was what was bringing attention to him. But you know, you see Andrew Jack walking around in the crowd. The guy's that big; he can't he can't hide what he's got. He's in a tracksuit, but he's bursting out of it. No one was stopping him. Mm. No one was following him. No one was turning their head to look at him, and he was just checking out stalls and whatever. And I thought that's a bit sad. Yeah, when he's like yeah, one of the top. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah. I think what, I, what I've what i taken from it is, there's a shift in generation. So when you look at the generation who was queuing up for Sam, it's all the new generation yeah, from yeah. maybe 18 to 25, 20, 21, yeah, even yeah. maybe a little bit older, like 22. Yeah. yeah. So it's like all these people who are consumed by social media, Instagram, and not by competition. Yeah, yeah. And the, the only way we've seen Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler was like through... DVDs yeah, or through clanging yeah, and banging yeah, weights yeah. doing what they yeah. do whereas yeah. they've they've almost built this like 
relationship, like online relationship with yeah. Sam because he's posted every day and they relate to him. Yeah, so they feel like, like they know him or whatever. When yeah. we've just said, we, we first expo we went to was 10 years ago. Well, that would have been everyone's first expo. Yeah. So in their minds, they're going, oh my God, Sam, who I've watched every single fucking day yeah. Yeah. and he's like me, is here. So it's like almost like, um, it's like clout. Yeah, I yeah. want a picture with Sam because everybody knows who Sam is, and it'll be cool for me to be mm. fame like with someone who's famous. But like, like you say with social media as well now. Obviously, way back in the day, if you used to see a glimpse of Ronnie or Jay, you know, you don't, you didn't know who they were as a person because it wasn't out there on social media, no. and you'd see these DVDs and stuff. So there'd be a big want to go and see these people mm. because they were actual freaks as well. And you know, you just would never see that shit in person. Yeah. But now, because like you say, these the younger generation now, they're watching YouTube every single day, YouTube, YouTube. So the people that were getting like hounded, that kid in the gym that I mentioned, yeah, that Tristan kid, 2.6 million followers or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, when yeah, he was in the gym, much. you didn't even notice him, did you? And I, no. I said, I, I recognize that Tiny. kid. Yeah, and yeah, I heard yeah, his no. voice, I said, he's American, he's definitely the kid that I'm on about. No one knew who he was in the gym where we were yeah, all lifting yeah. weights. Then when you got to the expo, there's crowds and crowds and crowds mm -hmm. around him. It's crazy, isn't it? Like it's, it's like a, the industry like that, what we just see, it's not it's not really bodybuilding, is it? No, no it's it's influencer. All. It's influencing, it's fitness, yeah. fitness, yeah. influencer. Yeah. And I think that's where people now, and I, and I can understand why, because the people used to try and compete to get some sort of validation or some, some sort of uh, um, accolades and recognition. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. as, as Sam, Sam's done, he's not even competed. He's just created content every single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no knock on him, just no, the no, way no, things no. are. It's like... a completely different <coughs> shift in the whole industry. I heard, yeah. I think I said to you, I heard someone as he walked past and he said to his missus, you know, it's so hard to differentiate between um, the bodybuilders and the influencers. Yeah, it was. They yeah. don't know the difference. No, no. and you, you don't. No. Yeah. No. Unless you've got massive line for an influencer and fuck off for bodybuilders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, yeah, it just showed you like the shift in the whole industry. Yeah. So it was good, but again, it's just not our scene I'd anymore. Someone messaged me, said, um, you know, Benny, the ones in gyms. Yeah, yeah. He said, oh, I was there yesterday. I said, oh, did you go for much? And obviously he owns a few gyms. So he said, not much, just grabbed a few bits of kit, got a few bits of panata and stuff. You know, did you get much? I was like, got two cookies. <laughs> <laughs> standard, yeah, standard. Um, right, we've actually got quite a few questions because people are starting to absolutely watch the podcast. Oh my um, God. Right, first work, one, man. first one's quite good. It's because Tom wasn't on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, numbers don't lie. No. <laughs> it's actually from Roachy, I think. You know, you know Roachy? I know Roachy. Yeah. Um, what made you become coaches? Let me go first. It, you Basically, know, just yeah. helping people, just so, obviously competed way back when. And then someone asked me for a diet, they did all right out of it, it looked quite good. And then it was just helping and helping and helping, that was it. And then it was everyone. Did I ever tell you who so will represent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, uh... <laughs> no, it was them lads all there who wanted, who were all, go we were all going on holiday. They all got on diets, all got in good shape, and they just knock on from there, just helping and helping. That's do, you, do you know what's good about that is, and my story's the same, and I imagine your, well, I know yours yeah. is the same. Yeah. You've not gone. I want to be a coach and I want to make money. That yeah, was yeah, never no, a thing, never. right? So the, the same with me. Mine yeah. was all free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People used to ask me all the time while I was working yeah, yeah. as an engineer. Not sure if yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, as I was working, and I was always helping people because I properly enjoyed it. That was it. That's and I loved the gratification you get from seeing them improve their lives. Yeah. yeah. And there was no, there was never even a thought process of, oh, maybe one day I can make some money yeah, from this. That was never, no. never a thought process. Just and then it gradually just fades into it. Yeah, yeah. And that's why everyone ends up good coaches because you're in it for the right reason. Yeah, yeah like the whole thing of <clears throat> find your passion, help people with it, and then you have to make money from it because yeah, yeah. it takes up so much of your time yes. that you can't. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well, I have to then charge yeah. because then it's like, well, I've got 50 clients. And but then yeah. obviously when you do then charge, you're like, oh, I can actually improve my service it. now yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you're in, and over time, what well, I've just put it on Instagram, over time your results are guaranteed yeah so if you're guaranteeing results then and your time yeah. then you're like well okay well i can afford i can afford to charge more for this because it's mm. like well i'm, I'm literally yeah. one of the best in the game so it's like well the better you are it's the same thing as a ferrari and a fucking yeah. whatever car mm. you, you're going to charge more for it because it's a higher quality and it's perceived as higher value you'll see yeah. a lot of coaches as well they'll launch themselves with no realistic back catalog either because they've never done it before they've just i'm, I say, I'm, I'm x amount a month already <sighs> and it's just like load of content videos of like how to train how to do this but there's no transformation no ever. i say this to everybody i say right do 10 for your first year keep your job this is my advice keep yeah, your yeah. job for the first year i will prep you for free 
to show the credit because you can't charge somebody if you can't get the results. Oh, no. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You can't say, I can do this for you. Yeah. So on even on a sales call, like someone will message me on a consultation call and I'm like, yeah, I can want, and the actual conviction within my oh, voice. Yeah. Because you know for a fact, can fa if they I follow what you say, I've you done know, it yeah. hundreds and hundreds yeah. of times. Yeah, so yeah, I know yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. work. Yeah. So I'm like, if you do X, X Y, and Z, you will get the results. Yeah. I can't say you're going to win the show because it's down to who's on the day, yes. but you're the best version you've ever been. Yeah, and at first, when you start, you might have a bit of imposter syndrome because you're second guessing, thinking, God, that guy's not really got great results, and do I really know what I'm doing? And then when you've done hundreds and hundreds of people and you understand, hold on, I've always knew what I was doing, it's mm -hmm. just they wasn't putting yeah, the fucking yeah. work in. Mm -hmm. And you start to see that, it starts to come yeah. through the cracks. So that's, yeah, that's the main reason I started coaching was, well, a little bit different for me was, I was on gym floor and I was PTing. Right, and yeah, yeah. when I was PTing, it was like, okay, you're gonna do unsociable hours. Yes. So it's like, okay, well, I'm doing six in the morning, seven in the morning, maybe eight. And then I'm doing six at night, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I've got no, I'm trading time for money. Yes. And you get to a certain ceiling level where you're like, okay, well, I'm earning X amount for per hour. The only yeah. way I can do this is do more hours or do up the price. You're gonna hit more money when you up the price and then get less clients but obviously you're doing less hours. And you're like, okay, I want more hours. Well, some people can't afford it. So you catch yourself on what you can earn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was a thing where I was like, if you trade time for money, you're never gonna become, you can never scale that. No. Because there's only one of you. Yeah, only, so yeah, then like eventually hours. it was like, okay, well, if we, look, the way we started off coaching with the business side of things before, like after we started paying was like, well, let's just charge everybody what they charge for a PT. So it's like they charge 35 pound yeah. or 40 pound. Okay, for per month, it'll be 100 and whatever pound. Yeah. Uh, so what it was doing was every time I got an online client, I could f like kind of move the the in-person client away and then I'd just- And you'd actually get better yeah, results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just swapped them over like yeah, that. Yeah. So well, it's actually a better service because yeah. it's not just one hour there and then. No. It's pretty much 24 seven, 24 they've got what they want. Yeah, yeah. You know so what then, I mean? so yeah, so every person that would come in online and, I'd, and I'd get them for a month, I'd take the, the PT off and I'd say, well, I'm not, can't do that hour of PT. Okay, yeah, for yeah, yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I, felt, what I feel like I can see? Like, from our generation and generations before, right, where there wasn't, there was nowhere near as much um, info out there, right? So a lot of stuff that we did was trial and error. Mm -hmm. So the guys that are coming up now that aspire to, the goal straight away is, right, I wanna be a coach because I want that to be my job and I want to make money. Already it's kind of like the wrong reasons. And then they go, right, there's this information out here now, so I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, because I've been told 100 times off all these other people that doesn't work. No, no, we tried it. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. tried it. So we did the three hours cardio and see how that felt and did it work and did it not. Like we was our own guinea pigs. Yes. Mm. We tried these certain anabolics this, and seen how they feel. This moves on to the next question that someone's actually okay. asked. What is your coaching methodology? And the thing that people don't realize is we have, so we have a list and list and different, yeah. so many different methods yeah, to yeah. what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And not every method is used on the same person. No. no. And not every method is used in the same situation. There'll be no. certain, like, as all three of us will have all different ways of prepping in a sense of like, at one stage of prep, you might need this. And at one stage of prep, you might need that. Yeah, yeah. For example, you're doing no cardio and I might have to do an hour's cardio. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, there's not just like one methodology, like this is the blueprint, this yeah. is how you do it. It's knowing exactly all the tools and when to deploy them tools. Yeah. And, and that's, like, that's why we like, it does take around anywhere up to like 72 hours to set a client up. Mm. Yeah. Because if, 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 a, if you inquire with a coach and you get a plan back like that, <coughs> there's an issue. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. a copy and paste job. And, and then even then, when they're set up, it's not 100% there and then it's like, right, now we've got to start to understand yeah. you as a, not just the way your body works, but the yeah. way your mind works as well and understand yeah. your body and how far we can push it and what you 100%. need and when to pull back. And even to train that, and when you're going for a prep, I said it actually, I said it to Brandon, who's obviously a couple of weeks out, yes. at the start of his prep, I said, come train with me. And I set his mindset up then yeah. Yeah. and I drilled it into him and every yeah, week yeah. I'll drill it into him and I'll text him and it's it's coaching that mindset into yeah. him so that that mental fortitude, yeah. because that's what he needs. Some people have it, some people don't, or some people build it over time. And I think everybody builds it over time. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, we're coaching you on the mindset as well, rather because we've done it. Yeah. yeah, We know. That's why that was point, that part of saying, I would never ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself or, done, or done. I've not already done. Because I said, yeah, you're going to feel like this. Yeah, you know even, how they're going to feel. Even in a set, I, some lads came down from Doncaster to train with us yeah. the other day, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And um, I said to him, on rep four, it'll kick in. Yeah. Because I've done that set you know, a yeah, yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, yeah. fucking hell, I'm not told you. See, because <laughs> if, you, if you'd never been to those places before, I'm not going to say trenches and shit because it's not war, is it right? Yeah. But like, if you'd never been to those places before and know how it felt, I remember being there one day and thinking, right, 
if I wasn't on prep right now, I'd go to the hospital because I feel like I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I feel that bad. I feel like I'm dying. My body's shutting yeah. down. I don't feel great. But I knew why. Yes. Now, if you'd never been there and then you've got a client who's there because they're getting fat free yeah, yeah. and they start telling you how they're feeling, you'd be like, oh, shit, I, I need to change things here. But yeah, you yeah. you can have the confidence to go in, no, mate, look, yeah. been there 100 times yes, before. 100%. I know you're feeling. I had it, I had it um, when I was, it was COVID. And I was compete. I was obviously just carrying on prepping because I thought I'll hopefully get a show. Yeah. Luckily I did. And then um, I was. I think I was. I was just literally. It's gonna sound bad. This. I was literally on the kitchen floor, and I was saying to my ex missus like, "I'm not going to hospital because if they test me for COVID, like I was yeah, like yeah. genuinely like yeah, yeah. Ten, deep, <laughs> ten, 10 days deep into all that time, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. that like genuinely thought I was dieting, and I was like, I'm not going to hospital though because if I do, they, 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 it, they yeah. might, might yeah. fucking keep me in or whatever. Yeah, I'm yeah, like. Yeah. But you, if you haven't been to them places, you, you, you can't, you can't empathise with it. No. Um, next question, super droll in the off season. No, no, I don't no. think it's needed. The no. only, no. the only time I would deploy super droll is maybe, on, maybe a, a um, rebound. Maybe. maybe. I, I Depends on, how hard you want to hit it. Yeah, I think doing it on a car book phase works really well yeah. for fullness. Yeah, because yeah. we did it. We, we did, did it with yeah, you, and I've yeah, done yeah. it personally. And the fullness, because you're fat free, yeah, and you're gonna pull water, it's very hard to then spill. So if you've got say three days of carbon up, and you add in say twenty mega super drop, yeah. um, that the the actual fluid and the fullness that it gives you is crazy, and then you can just pull the super. Yeah, I mean, off. I've done it. And yeah. it, was, it was insane. It worked really well. Yeah. yeah, but I also did it in a push up, right? But I've had a client do it in a push up. I can I just when I push up, you've seen. But my body's a little bit heavier, it just doesn't cope very well. Yeah, yeah. So a six week push up, I just can't cope with it. I might get three weeks and I'm done. What I found with the rebound as well is like, it, it'll imp it um, impacts you negatively because your ability to train. Yeah. You can't because the water retention is going to be quite high anyway. Yeah, yeah. For most people, but yeah. there is certain people. Oh, yeah, that, so yeah. Again, I mean, look at, look at Luca, for example, yeah, like you yeah. say, he was 198 and a half pound with me in Portugal. And then not too long after, he's like 250 pound and he's he's training like an animal, he's eating well, no issues. Like, it's not normal, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but some people can handle but it. But again, it's the same thing as you said with the methodology. It's like, everything's used at a different person. Yeah. But I think on a blank, like overall, like most people have come in contact with, which can't, they can't use it in off season. No. Yeah, because you just yeah. lower back pumps. Yes. And then what I find as well is your toxicity levels, you're gonna cut your off season short because you're going to have such toxicity and also like negative impact on your blood work yeah. that we're going to be like, fucking all right, okay, that wasn't really just for a bit more water gain or a bit more strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the same as like throwing a couple of anadrol in or whatever. It's just the same. It's, um, oh, fucking hard did that, man. I, did, <laughs> I, I genuinely, yourself. mate, I did, I think I did two, two nap 50s yeah. on a rebound. I couldn't drive. I was like, fucking <laughs> on my back. Honestly, I thought I could put my shoes on. Couldn't do anything, mate. It was horrendous. I, I remember doing, doing one and thinking, fucking oh, I'm getting strong but I was so like wet between the ears yeah. I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing then I did two and I was like yeah I'm getting like insanely <laughs> strong now but my head's hurting a bit I'll be alright then I did three and then my nose is bleeding in the gym and I'm like should probably stop doing this yeah, yeah. <laughs> one more touch. week <laughs> push it for one more week no but again doing going through that you can then tell that story yeah that's wrong yeah. don't yeah. do it yeah I've yeah. done it and it didn't work yeah, it didn't work yeah. Yeah. pointless um, what's the number one Halo What's your thoughts on it? Close to yeah, common. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I think when we're looking at, you know, <laughs> it's going off round here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, when we're looking at Halo, it's like okay, we're looking at training performance at the end of a prep. Yeah. When it's like okay, well, every <laughs> we could add in testosterone, we could add masterone, we could add in injectables, but that's going to take quite a while to hit. Yes. So it's a lot easier to go, okay, let's just, if for the last three weeks, let's just add in Halo, it's instant. Short burst. Short burst. Keep you done. strong, keep yeah. you hard. At that point, your your health markers are going to be skewed. Yeah. So it's like... But for a short period of time. For a short time. period of time. Yeah. yeah. And it keeps you nice and strong. It keeps, well, I personally find it keeps a little bit of aggression in there. It's going to allow you to... The only way I can describe it to a client is when you've got one, like everyone's like, one more rep and you think, yeah. oh, when you're on pregnant, like, no. Yeah. And then you've got that little bit <laughs> of, that. Yeah, you but just that don't take it before you drive to the gym. Because I've had it where I took it before I drove to the Traffic. gym, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, pull this fucking steering wheel off. 
Walk it's an automatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, just take it when you get to the gym, yeah. chill out a bit, and then and then uh, then take it then. But um, oh, there's a deep one here actually, mm. which is quite random. But what is your purpose? Just the Whoa. purpose of life here yeah, now. That's what I mean. <laughs> wow. What is your purpose? Wow. Jesus. To flip cars and get bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm all out of cars. Yeah, you do, you do, you do none of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you're fucked. <laughs> what is God? What would you say? It's not therapy, but a bit of therapy. I feel like it is. So I, okay, so on, why? Give us an angle. Yeah, yeah, what, in what respect? I, I guess why someone's asking is okay. I started the brand as purpose driven, right? Yeah. And the reason that I started the brand or, or named the brand purpose driven is because I wanted to work with driven, like per, uh, people yeah, with purpose okay, yeah, yeah. and with drive. Yeah. So regardless of like what your line of work is, yeah. everyone kind of has got their purpose and then the, they've got the drive for it. Yeah. And that's the type of people yeah. that I resonate with. So yeah. that was like why I started yeah. the so brand as purpose. Driven. Without like being cliche, I just want to fucking be a good person, yeah. but a good person. Was, I'll write a list. <laughs> I'm doing a shit job <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> but like it, when, when you're a good person, because like yeah. say like you're helping all these other people change their lives for the better with, with purpose driven, with yeah. the mentor yeah. or whatever, and feed off that good energy. Mm. And it's just a feel good feeling. Yeah. Look, we're only here once, yeah? And we're not here for a long fucking time. Yeah. So you may as well enjoy it. Yeah, so I, think, I think for me, there's like, I have different purposes in different aspects. Yeah. So I think I always split my life up into like business, bodybuilding and family. And that's just kind of my three things. So like- Gay it, for pay as well, don't forget yeah. that bit there. <laughs> Honestly, it's still not paying enough. It's still like, you keep Gay for no pay. <laughs> Gay for fucking hugs. Anyway. So when <laughs> dickhead. So with business, it's like like Tom was saying, impact, help as many people as I can, yeah. like, and then help people change their lives. Give over now. It's like give other people opportunities for jobs, and build that team, as yeah. you say, with good energy. With with bodybuilding, it's now it's like inspire other people who are just from a small town. Doc Finka. Uh, back in the day, I got told like, you'll never fucking do that. Yeah. Oh, you got no chance. Yeah, like, yeah. You're not going to be that. You're fucking. Who do you think you are? I want to be the guy that's doing it, so then the young kids come in the gym and be like, well, Ryan's doing it. Yeah. yeah. Ryan's, well, Ryan's just training this gym and he's yeah. doing it. Like, he's yeah. he's got to this and he's done that. And so you can be an inspiration for other people to do chase the same thing. Yeah, so when I when I look back at, say, at, at my wife's family and then my family, like, no one ever owned businesses. They all just fucking worked for the man. Yeah. That was it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they all just kind of made ends meet. And some of them even didn't make ends meet, right? So we were like, you know, we sat down at one point and gone, Fuck me, we've broke we've broke the cycle. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. broke the cycle now because now our kids are going to do what we've done, and then that could be like generations then because yeah, then yeah. their kids are going to do it, and then they'll all be owning businesses and doing well and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's quite fucking it's quite cool. Yeah, yeah. To look well, back. that's yeah, that's exactly the same with me as well with family. It's like okay, I obviously I don't have kids, but maybe somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but. Um, Looks like <laughs> not done the DNA test yet. Um, but that's the same thing. It's like give them opportunities and options. Yes. Mm. Whether they take it or don't take it, yeah. I want them to say, I want to do X. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you've yeah. got six months. There's there's the dough. <coughs> you don't have to get into the system of being like, I've got to get a job. I've got to get a mortgage. Yeah, yeah. I've got to get this. Oh, I can't get out of that job because now I'm in, I've got a shit ton of bills. I can then provide them and say, I'm not going to be spoiled, but I'm like, you, I want you to have the opportunities to chase after whatever you want to do, yeah, yeah. whether that's uni, whether that's being a doctor, whatever the fuck yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But I want you to have the option to do that. Yeah, and do you know what? In, in the businesses that we have right now, between us all, nothing, no GCSE made a slight bit of an impact on any of it. No, no it's it's all building rapport yeah. and- Being a good fucking person, yeah. like I mentioned before. Yeah. It, when you look at, I read a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. They did a study over like 10 years um, with the highest CEOs and the, all the traits that they all had. And it was like synergy was one where it's like working together just not to get anything back. Yeah. Just be like you say, being a good person. And there was loads of different things, but when you actually read through, you think, oh shit, I do that. Without yeah. you knowing you even yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you're just genuinely working from from a good place. And I think that's like you say, that purpose is help if you can help people, inspire people and then yeah. make some dough. Yeah. Back for days. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of back to the whole find your passion, help people and then 
yeah, uh, make some money from it. The another one. It's not deep. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How big is your cock? Here? <laughs> Definitely not deep. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go deep. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So she's got a she's got a deep vagina. It's not, it's not a, it's not uh, deep, so. What animal do you think you could take in a fight? Tortoise. Sure. All day. I don't know, man. It's yeah, hard shell it. Are getting through like... that? <laughs> when you when you when you attack it and it fucking sh- shuts itself oh, yeah. into that shell, are you getting at that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Yeah, That's tough. Difficult one okay, so what animal? Let's just say, okay, let's just list the animal. Do you reckon you could take a grizzly bear? No, no not a fucking chance, no. mate. Not even close. No, the no. big hands. Big. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what's meant to be. But there's the... people that think they can, isn't they? Yeah. I tell you oh, what's yeah. meant to be the worst animal or like the most vicious animal, a hippopotamus. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. What? How yeah. though? I, I, when have it's you seen them go though? No. Like when I've when I've heard this in the past, I thought I'm gonna have to check this out for myself. Oh, Not in person. Yeah. Just looked at a few videos and I'm like, nah. What mate. do they do? Mate, they're fast as yeah. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they are fast as fuck. Sort of fucking fast, man. <laughs> fast as fuck, man. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Most animals are kick fucking. Most yeah. animals, the, the fucking animals, mate. That's what they, yeah. that's what they do. Oh mate, yeah. penguins. Yeah, <laughs> penguin. Tom's got loads. He's got a hit list. You got, you got to <laughs> think, you got to think, right? If, if if you're taking on an animal, it's got to at least like size up to you. Right, do you know okay. what I mean? You can't go just yeah, kicking penguin. a fucking chihuahua. In, do you know what I mean? <laughs> chihuahuas are <laughs> well, vicious. Yeah. I looked after some chihuahuas one time, and I had to bed. You know what bed sheeting is? Where like. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, it was on my couch, go get it off. I was like, get like get off the fucking couch. So I had to get a blanket, wrap it in the blanket, thingy, and throw it outside. Oh my <laughs> oh, god. Honestly, it was vicious as fuck. Got on my pillow on my bed, <laughs> couldn't get it off. It was like, rah, 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 rah. I was like, fuck it now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's terrorizing me, it's making me look a mug. <laughs> uh, next question. Have you ever run DMP? No. 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 Maybe. Have you? Have you? Yeah, never. mate. So you remember the the Arnold? Imagine me on DMP. Oh, fuck mate. you know. Fuck, I'm sweating. I'm hot. Um, it's like me if I have anything hotter than lemon herb sauce and Nando's. Oh, fucking all bit hot here. Um, yeah, it was a yeah, it was a touch and go. It was well, everything's a tool in it. So I was like, I said I'd never run it, and then I ended up doing it. Um, worst thing I've done. Yeah, yeah. I, I do know. I only know one person who's admitted anyway. Told me he did it, and he said. When he took it, he was on the couch, he couldn't physically move, no. and he just felt like he was cooking from the inside. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Um, it's basically, it was, it's gonna take forever to explain it, but basically just heats up the thermogenesis of your yeah. body. If you eat carbohydrates, the heat will go more and more, so you can't really eat, carb, you can't yeah. have any carbs on it. And I was sitting with them Dyson fans. Yeah. I was sat on my couch like this, with just on in boxes, Dyson fan on me the whole time. Couldn't do cardio. And nah. it, it does, it just literally cooks you. But I didn't look any better for it, I just looked worse. Yeah, it's flat. You just, just flat. There's no just, control in it, it is was, it? It was at a point where it was like, right, we're gonna have to push. Like, I had probably two weeks and I was like, we're gonna have to push it here um, because I wasn't ready. And it was it was for the Arnold's prep. Yeah. Um, and I obviously, I still wasn't ready, but it, it just made me look worse. It was just like the last resort. Just flatten out. It was just the last resort. And yeah. then I looked at myself and I saw, and, Obviously, at the time, people were like, no, it'll come back, it'll come back. It's just water retention, it's this, that, and the other one. I just thought, I can't yeah, do this. It it. Look for. And then I carried on with it, and I just looked worse and worse. So yeah. I don't, for the actual like um, usage of it, the risk, what it is, the, the tolerable, like, oh, you fucking tolerable. It, tolerable. 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 Is so close to the risk, like the actual fate yeah, yeah, yeah. dose. Yeah. That you're running the ri- you're fucking towing the line so much. Yeah. If someone's not done the actual tablets right, you can fucking die. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah, like, they've oh. not dosed it right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah basically, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you yeah. haven't done it, you can't tell people not to do it. Yeah, so true. yeah, it was uh, one of them. Don't do it, kids. No. no. Drugs for mugs. Should everyone using steroids use metformin? Nope. No. 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 What about uh, an ABR? ABR. Yeah, so like, mm. tell us, tell, tell us, Martin. Uh, there's definite benefits, isn't there? These, yeah, there's definite benefits, but again, person dependent, just check your fucking blood pressure. Mm, yes. so don't, don't take something unless you need it. I yeah. think what people do is they do just a blanket statement and go like, you need this. Yeah, need this, you yeah, need yeah, this, yeah. It's and wrong. it's like, no, again, it's e- each person dependent. Yeah. Set the plan, watch, watch, collect the data, as people hate seeing data, but collect the information that you need to collect, blood pressure, yeah. blood glucose, and then in, like deploy the actual, I hate that word as well, sorry. Deploy the actual um, 
tools that we need and the, the drugs that we need to then combat anything that's yes. out of whack. Yeah, yeah. So you don't yeah. put that in. If you if you blood sugar's sweet, your blood pressure's sweet, why are you taking metformin? Why are you taking telemocytin? Yeah. Pointless. Don't do it just because you're taking steroids. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing that everybody seems to like yeah. click onto. Go, oh, well, yeah. I need this, this, and this. It's like, no. It's, it's for example, it's the same thing as like, do you need Clem right now? No. You don't no. know if you no. do. It's no. like, okay, yeah. progress has stopped, add it in. Yeah. We don't start off with a list of Anavar this, this, and this in mm. a prep. We add things in to keep progress, yeah. but then See, not. For me, even metformin completely fucks my gut, completely. I end up bloated, I can't eat anything. Mm. It's fucking pointless. Yeah. It's going, mm. It makes you go backwards. So again, person dependent as Everything's well. Everything's person dependent, yeah. yeah. But people have seen to get this uh, notion of, um, what else is there? The whole argument between managing fatigue and volume. So I think what he means by this is reps and reserve. Are you a fan of reps and reserve? Or are you a fan of going no, all not. out of failure? I'm, I'm a fan of knowing your fucking body. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we'll train to failure and beyond, but sometimes we just fucking won't. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you know, as long as you know you've took it far enough that you've got an extreme pump and you know your body because you've done it for that many years that, like, look, them extra three or four partial reps or force reps right now, not, it's not going to help. I'm just going to be absolutely fucked for three days. There's no point. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely something to look at when in what phase you're in yeah so we we've done this quite a bit where yeah. phase in training so rather than being like this is the way i train and this is how many sets i'm going to do it's exactly the same as effective minim minimum dosages yeah as we just said you don't need everything at once so as you're going through a growing phase look at it and be like okay well let's go 10 sets See how I feel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I feel great. Okay, we've got more anabolics, we've got more food in about th two or three weeks down the line. Maybe add a few more sets in. Let's yeah. go 12 sets per session. Or if you've got a body part that needs to come up, let's add the sets onto them. And then and then it's like, okay, well, we've got X amount of this and X amount of uh, calories going in, a surplus of calories. Okay, we might be able to add a rest pause in here. We might yeah. be able to add a drop set in here. Things that, but when people are just going through and going, right, I'm only doing 10 sets, or no, I'm gonna do high volume, or I'm gonna do drop sets. It's like, no, use that as a, t everything again is a yeah, tool, a tool that yeah. we're using to keep progress going. And I think if you train your biceps on Monday and they're not sore on Thursday, you can fucking train them again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then instead of, if you've done it twice a week then rather than once, instead of the 52 weeks in a year, you've done 100 and- But it's, it's the yeah. same when you look at it, muscle protein synthesis within a muscle drops after 72 hours. Yeah. I think it's even 48 hours in yeah. some people. Yeah, yeah. So then you can actually hit that again with more frequency. Yeah, literally. So in a, in a sense, you could be like, well, I might only do, say you've got 12 sets for biceps. You might only do six sets then and six sets then. Yeah. But you're actually doing a better job than going, I'm gonna do a whole- Because that six sets on another day is gonna be a lot better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I think the big problem is when you talk about reps and reserve, People don't go to true failure. Nine out of 10 people yeah, yeah. don't know what failure is. So if you take, if you say to people, go to failure, when you can't do any more, that's you done, that's probably three reps in reserve. Yes. And the other thing that I have with a lot of my clients that come in on board and a lot of our clients anyway, is because they are not advanced trainers who can't really switch it on and take it there straight away, yeah. they need three sets. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need one. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. my one set is your best set you've ever done all year. When we did lap pull downs last week, yeah. First set, we were like, shit, are we gonna finish this session? Yeah, and like when the lads, and it showed me the other day, cause I don't PT, I don't really PT, but the lads came down to train and I was <coughs> like, okay, I'll train you. I, they was like, fucking hell, yeah. what the fuck? A After mess. one set, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, oh. But all my programs that I've set out to you are meant to be like these this. sets. And you've yeah. not been doing this for months yeah. and months. Yeah, yeah. That's where, if they're able to take the training there, the body will be able to facilitate more food less drugs, mm -hmm. less cardio. And then even down to the fact that you will, the stronger you become and the bigger you become, yep. the more fatigue you're gonna gain. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you're gonna be able to tap into that actual set even yeah. more. So like, I could say to someone, oh, I only do six sets for quads. Is that it? Yeah. I'm like, come and do six sets. Yeah. Yeah. See how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, like, it's taking it all the way fucking there and beyond. So I do think the argument is there for these reps in reserve, or I do feel, Periodizing and, and phasing your training yeah. is more beneficial because I've done it myself where I've gone into the gym and gone, I'm gonna fucking smash this. Yeah. Twatted myself and then yeah, week yeah. three, I'm fucked. But that's yeah. what's really difficult about that actual programming because <laughs> you as a person now, you might do two days, we might do, we might all train together now for two days, we'd do a fucking leg day and then a back day yeah, yeah. and we'll be like, 
we can't train for that third day. No, no. We've programmed in that we're going to do that third day. But we're fucked. Yeah, just and take a day off and then go again. And that's the other thing, isn't it? They're not being so married to your split. Yeah. Yes. You have to be like, okay, you've got to, I hate the word, but Jordan always says it, auto-regulate it. Where yeah. You've got to wake up and go, I feel fucked. But yeah. also, under, it's hard. It's dead hard because understanding, are you tired? Can you train? Are you just yeah, being yeah. a faggot? Yeah, yeah. Like, un- you need to understand your body and it's very hard. It takes years it takes and years. years, and, yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. and that's where I think people slip up now when they're going too advanced with this training methodologies yeah. that they just lose in the whole like the aspect of the fun side of it yeah. it's like okay let's do two or three sets and see how you are and it's just again that's why having a coach is great because the coach will help to tell with your body weight with your, your resting heart rate all these other variables yeah. I get it a lot when people say to me you know that second if we're doing that first set of 10 that second set of 12 to 15 or whatever should I use the same weight no, you shouldn't be able to use the yeah, 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 yeah. If you can, you you're not doing it wrong. Set. Yeah, yeah, it's not. I've not had that. I've had that. Break. Get it a lot, don't you? Yeah. What weight should I use? Well, use the weight that you're going to fail. You see, eighty kilogram for ten, and then you see eighty kilogram for fifteen. I'm like, <laughs> your first set, you bitched out. Yeah, that, that was a warm up. That, you, that was you full on bitched out. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Well, you've dropped it. No, that's it. Yeah. yeah. How do you, how do you approach a carb load? So, for example, we've got clients coming up in in shows. Yeah. What would be um, a generic, not a generic, but a, a, like a roundabout sort of carb process that you go through? I know you do this differently to that, I, how I do it. You front load, don't mm. you? You do, don't you? Yeah. I do it close into the show, running flat and then yeah. feed up. See, I do, I'll do a bit of a, a lower carb approach, like a bit higher fats, match the calories for like two or three days, yes. deplete, deplete the glycogen, and then I'll do high, higher and then taper down into yeah, the show sense. and hold the look. Yeah. The reason the reason that I do it that way is because I can't always see clients in person. Yeah. So I know for a fact that I'd rather be full full, full of glycogen. Be safe. Be, be safe on the safe because when when I've done it in the past with people and it's like if we've run out of time in the last few days, say I've carbs, say I've done six hundred gram carbs, we're three days out, six hundred gram carbs, fuck still flat. Right, seven hundred gram carbs, fuck still flat. Uh, Right, 800. Doing 800 before the day of a show yeah. for like the digestion, for the, yeah, the can stomach. Can you spill or whatever? Can yeah. you spill? Have we got to use more diuretics? Have we got it? And it's like, oh. Whereas if I've got you nice bursting full and I just need to maintain that look leading yeah. to the show, I can do that quite easily. It depends um, how close you are with the client at the time. So, for example, that year when we was with Mark, oh, that yeah, was yeah. fucking cool because yeah. that was like, right, I can see you in person. You're pulling a vacuum. You're a little bit flat. Let's fucking load up more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you're in person with the the person, you can you can easily do it a lot. A yeah. lot. But if yeah. they're over the side of the world or whatever, it's like it's, it's, I I err on the side of caution because I always think, yes, we might be. I'd rather be five percent flatter, and and conditioned yeah. than yeah. miss the mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you're always going to beat someone by being a little bit, especially in the amateur ranks. You're yes. always going to beat somebody if you've got a huge super super body uh, heavyweight body. But you've got a you've got a film. they need to fucking eat. Yeah. You've got a film because yeah. they will look better. Like look yeah. at Mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, Mo yeah. was so flat that he would have four or five guys in a day, and he still didn't fill out. Yeah, he just didn't oh. fill out. So, you, but I think with the the guys who like, because obviously a lot of my competitors are classic and so on. Mm, we've yeah. got the other aspect of making weight. Yeah. So yeah. that's the other aspect of it as well with my with the carb load. It's like if I front load them, or if we, I get them below below stage weight, and then I'll front load them in order to then be on weight. Yeah. And then we can just we can then maintain, maintain. just run yeah. into it stress free then. And that that'll be a better look than being like, I've done it previously where I've made the made the weight flat to the weight and then flat push to up. the weight and then try to push up in a day doesn't work mm, no. just because you can't fill out in a day. No, no. And again, for classic, you can't keep that small waist. You can't vacuum. It's like because you've got so much food yeah. that's having to. Go. If you're eating every hour, hundred yeah. gram carbs every hour, trying to fill up. So I done it, I done it in Portugal to a point where the day before the show I was messaging Jamie saying like, I can't. Day before the show where you normally starve and whatever, I, like, I can't even eat. I'm that full. Mm. No, no, push it in, push it in. So I fucking like I ate a ridiculous amount of food. Next day when I got up, I'm like, yeah, I couldn't. There's no way I could pull a vacuum. My stomach is full. But for the look, yeah. I was like concrete. Everything was yeah, round yeah, and yeah. full and bubbly. So even though my belly was a bit round, but the abs were like bricks, yeah. and it worked. It was a great yeah, look. Yeah, because yeah, it's bodybuilding. It's yeah, a bit yeah, of a different. Yeah, it's a yeah. different class, totally different. The other thing that I get a lot of um, guys, obviously who's coming up to compete, is the backstage protocol. Like, okay, what's yeah, yeah. the what's the craziest things you've ever seen? Like backstage. I've seen Harry. Well, fuck, a lot of Harry balls have gone down. And all that I sort think of what stuff. people do is they're that hungry. They go, 
I'm backstage. Yeah, yeah. I need to pump up. Yeah, yeah. Chocolate, muffins, oh, yeah. jam, oh. everything. Because <laughs> you, you know just what? Eat. It's like, yeah, the ice, there's a guy yeah. sat next to me. I think it was a true athlete. I think I might have told you. Some Spanish guy. And um, we was backstage for hours and constantly rice cake, rice cake, rice cake. He just cut, he just ne never stopped eating. And he didn't look that lean anyway. And I thought, this cunt's fucked it. And <laughs> he fucking beat me. Fuck. I've all wrong. Yeah, all wrong. But I don't, I don't even understand as well, like when people will eat rice cakes backstage and not have water. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's dry. Like, it's just dry. Yeah. Where's it going? You're not, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's just no. sitting in your stomach. Yeah, yeah. You need <coughs> water to transport the carbohydrates. Yeah. So when you're backstage, mate, you, you're ready. You should yeah. be ready. You should I had it my first ever show, and he was a big lad. He was he was huge, and I thought, fuck's sake. And uh, everyone was there. He's obviously from his hometown. He's yeah. pumping up. He was doing like sherbet, niacin, <laughs> pre workout. And I was thinking, fuck me, he's huge. I'm going to get battered. Mate, he couldn't hit a pose. Bet he was washed His out. His stomach there. was Fuck, fucked. Yeah. He, he had to, he, he was sat gas. Sweating. He'd pumped up that much. And that's another thing when you're backstage yeah. as well. Don't over pump. Yeah. Because yeah. you got you don't want to get a pump like you've got in the gym. Because yeah. the thing is, is like you're not going to be able to hit a pose. Yeah, I've got fuck all mobility when I'm pumped. Yeah. Can't move so it's like you want to pump up enough. And then people will say, when do I pump up? The class that's gone on before you, Yes. if it's a five to t six, maybe a 10 man class, start then, start then yeah, yeah. because that's going to last about 20 minutes. And as yeah. you pose on stage, you're going to pump up yeah. as you're posing yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. You don't want to go on flat, but yeah. you just want, you want to go on. So you, you've got a decent pump and you're full, but you're not bursting because you're going to hit, you're going to be out there holding your mandatory for, and they go, oh yeah, you'll be fucked. I think the best yeah, thing yeah, to yeah. do is right, before, before you go backstage, have a plan. Your plan is, this is the food I need to eat yeah. this time before stage. This is when I need to pump up this time before stage. Because if you don't, you go back and your mind is blown. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's eating different stuff. They're all eating at Doing different, different times. Shit. You're like, he's competing with me. He's competing with me. He's pumping up now. Maybe I should pump up now. Yeah. Now, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go with a plan and stick to your own plan. And the thing as well is that I would say is always overpack for the day. Because yeah. the show might overrun. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, take an extra meal. Yeah, take yeah. some more water. Like take things that you know, just necessities because you don't don't expect the show to run on time. Yeah, because yeah, most of the time it's not going to. Yeah, and if it does, them. fucking good luck, great. Yeah. But yeah. and if you do overpack, it's nice because you get off stage. Yeah, you can eat. And everything. what you do is you throw <laughs> your salmon, your rice, your banana, your jam, <laughs> your cookie. You mix it all up in one bowl and you smash yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? When you, what's uh, what's the, your go to after? You're, you're weird though. You don't like eating like. The, I bet a load going into a show. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So like I'm. I bet fucking 50 muffins in three days I'm all, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah mine mine is just like I love breakfast so yeah. I will book a hotel like and like a the with the best breakfast ever and then yeah. I just want to go down and eat the breakfast like a free for all like a go yeah, up and just get yeah. It. yeah because yeah. what's happened is as I've gone through prep I've probably gone to events done other shoots done other this that and the other and I've stayed in hotels and every fucking time I've not been able to eat the breakfast yeah. Yeah. and I'm thinking I've just put hot water in these oats and it's fucking dog shit because <laughs> on prep you want to make your oats perfectly yeah, don't you yeah, yeah. and someone says to me oh, I'll make your oats so I'm like no, you won't. No, no. I'll make I, I, I trust you. I love you, but I mean, you're not <laughs> you making me out. I'll me do it myself because it's the only good thing I get all day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I always crave um, tuna butter, a cucumber, yeah, cock. Because <laughs> I think the tuna yeah, tuna you know why? I think it's the moisture because <laughs> you're so dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because you're a fan. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> deprived. <laughs> but, <laughs> but oh, oh Carissa, for fuck's sake! But I do. I always um just horny. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. I get off stage and I think, fucking hell, there, there it is. <laughs> mine's, <laughs> mine's always like cheese and beans. Like, to, like yeah. cheese and beans, always yeah. weird. Nah. I feel like I'm pregnant when I'm uh, prepping. It's yeah, weird. we need to stop talking about it now because I am hungry. <laughs> 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 it's not really soft. Yeah. But now, uh, yeah, the good runner show's coming up. We're going to be... Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Up and down. When's the next, next week? Next, next week, week yeah, yeah. Tony's probably a couple of weeks after that. So yeah. we've got like... Yeah, start. season starts now, so Sick. we're going to be busy. Mm. Um, what else have we got coming up? YouTube is going to be every week. No mm. bullshit, just bodybuilding, just hammering sessions out. Yeah. Just showing you really what it takes to be at the top level of bodybuilding training-wise. Um, podcast again. Yep. Team meet up again. So yeah, it's all it's all kicking off. It's good. Crazy. Yeah, it's going to be decent. So another episode done. I don't, how do we just know. talk shit for that long? We're gonna fall out. I, I'm sure that nobody watches till this long. <laughs> no. Someone might. So if you're watching, thank yeah. you. The night before the podcast, we're always on the phone for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sex. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Again, don't comment below because it makes us paranoid. Of yeah. <laughs> just call us call dicks. Like, subscribe, share, share, do all that jazz. Peace. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks.